Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar, Telling Your Brand Story in a Crisis. My name is Mike Morrison. Um, we're going to get started in a few minutes. Uh, just wanted to let you know that things are running smoothly and that we're ready to go. Our panelists are ready to go as well. Uh, you'll see on your on your software that there's ability to ask questions. Uh, if you have any questions for our panelists uh, during the webinar, please use that and we'll get to as many questions as possible. Uh, but yeah, things are going smoothly. Uh, just sit tight a few more minutes. We're going to probably start in just four or five minutes. We just want to give everyone enough time to get registered and settled in. All right. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Hi everyone, Mike Morrison here. Just wanted to let you know that we're gonna get started in about two minutes. Uh, some people are still registering and getting in. There's over 277 of you already, so that's really exciting. Um, and if you missed my earlier message, there is a questions feature. Um, if you have any questions for speakers or panelists, uh, we'll have them, uh, you can just fill that out and we will get to them uh, throughout the webinar. So we'll just get started in two minutes. Just wanna make sure everyone gets in. Thanks so much, everyone. Unmute. 
Hi everyone, uh, Mike Morrison here. Thank you so much for joining this webinar. Uh, I'm here in Calgary, Alberta. There's people, almost 300 of you, uh, basically joining from all over the world, which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, a lot of Canadians here, um, and a lot of us, um, you know, despite us being from all over the world, are all going through similar situations right now, which is really a unique opportunity and a unique event where the whole uni uni uh, world is unified uh with this uh with this crisis that we're all dealing with so last week we started doing these free webinars um i thought it was just a great way of getting people together as we try to um, navigate these complicated times as opposed to all of us trying to figure it out individually i thought holding these webinars might be an awesome opportunity to hear insights from different types of companies uh, share thoughts, share opinions, uh, those types of things. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Mike Morrison, and I run a conference, uh, conferences all across the country, actually, a digital marketing conferences called uh, Social West, Social Central, and Social East. Uh, we've definitely been impacted by COVID-19 as we've had to move all of our conferences to the fall. Um, and so navigating the messaging and things around that uh, has been really uh, an interesting experiment, um, but uh, we're working on these webinars now. And we're really, really excited to have you here. And before we get started, I want to make sure we thank Skeeter Media. Skeeter Media is a Calgary-based multimedia and learning technology company. So if you're interested in e-learning right now, and I think it's something a lot of us are talking about, uh, they're focused on innovative learning systems and engaging learning experiences. Um, they offer a full suite of web and video and audio and graphic production services. So they stepped up and helped uh, uh, sponsor this, uh, these webinars. Uh, it's been very helpful to make sure that we can keep them free uh, and, and allow people to see, uh, it, allow as many people as possible to enjoy these uh, webinars. So thank you so much to Skeeter Media. Uh, today we're going to be joined by three experts um, and these are people um, that I personally know that I've worked with in different capacities over the last couple of years but over the last few weeks I've watched them sort of navigate this and um, I think the lesson so far for the last two weeks has been um, not to wait too long. So uh, make decide to make some movement, decide to make take some action uh, and I've certainly um, really proud and inspired by these people. So we're going to be talking to Kaylin Crump. Uh, she's the founder of Top Shelf as well as Rebloom, Re Re sorry. Um, and she's in Toronto. And we're going to be joined also by Farhan Mohammed. He's the editor-in-chief of Daily Hive, which has uh, outlets throughout the country. And then we're also going to be joined by Jared Grimm, who's a co-founder of Pressboard. And I'm really excited for you guys to hear about all the interesting things that uh, Press Board has been doing um, even before this event. So uh, we're going to spend about 10, 15 minutes with each of these uh, each of these panelists, and then we're going to sort of have a, a lightning round at the end where we can answer all your questions. And so on your in your software, you'll see the ability to ask us questions. Please take some time to answer those, ask those questions, and we'll get to as many of them as possible. Um, and then afterwards, this webinar will be uh, video. Uh, the video will be sent to you. Um, soon as this webinar is done. So um, you don't necessarily have to worry about taking too many notes. Uh, we'll try to send you some notes as well. So uh, just sit back and enjoy. And uh, we'll get started right away with Jared Grimm. Jared Grimm is in Vancouver. Uh, and he's the co-founder of Press Board. Um, like I said, I've worked with them over the last few years. And we'll just bring Jared Grimm here uh, on board. And he can chat with us about what about the storytelling. Hi, Jared. How are you? I'm good, Mike. How are you? Oh, just a Oh, good. Thank you. Good. <laughs> we actually had you speak at our conference at Social West a few years ago about storytelling, storytelling, something that you sort of uh, focus on. Yeah, I've uh, started press board around that idea, but I've always loved marketing and storytelling. I think my personal story is when I was 13 years old, I fell in love with the Who's the Boss, the TV show, which is dating myself. But I, what I loved was Angela Bauer's job. I don't know if anyone remembers, but she was running this ad agency. And I just thought that was so cool. She'd come home with these big storyboards and magazine ads and went for fancy dinners. Uh, and I fell in love with it then. And so I've always liked this idea of storytelling and how it can make not just a difference in the world, but even if it's used to sell jeans, this idea of influence. So tell everyone a little bit about what Pressboard does. Yeah, so further to that, we Pressboard is a tech company. So we build software. The problem that we ran into five or six years ago when I was working agency side was that there was this movement towards brands telling stories 
which is articles and videos, but most of the ad tech out there was built around banner ads. And so we thought, well, the stories are a lot different. There's a lot more metrics and analytics you need to know for it. So we started building some tech that just helped you understand how well a story was performing, if people were watching a video, if they're reading through it. And for the last six years now, we've been building tech around that and we license that tech to people like NBC Universal or Daily Hive, uh, Globe and Mail, there's uh, about a thousand publishers that use that software. Wow, that's amazing. Um, that's, I mean, I, and I, I've been working with you basically since the beginning of Pressboard, so to see it evolve has been really fascinating. It's been really interesting to watch. Well, Mike, you were, I remember this from years ago when I was still at New Ad and you came into the office uh, in Calgary and you told the team all about blogging and what blogging was about. So you and I go back to when people were still asking what blogging was. Uh, yeah. And I think you've always been in this, both of us have just been in this idea that there's an interesting idea around telling stories through a brand lens. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about um, the science and structure of storytelling that brands, um, you know, that they should be thinking about. Are there fundamentals that we should be considering right now? Yeah, I take a, a press board in general takes a fairly nerdy view of storytelling. This is where most of our team is software engineers. And so, we're a little bit more left brain when we're looking. So we spend a lot of time analyzing structure of story. So are there things that are repeatable in stories? And why is it that, so the, the example is, I'll, I'll kind of give you an example here um, of how a hero works. So let's talk about one concept of storytelling, which is this idea that every story has a hero. And that hero follows almost the exact same journey. Almost every movie and every book follows this hero's journey, which is, Hero starts in a normal place and then goes through into a new world, is called into action in that new world and defeats a challenge and then comes back changed. And that's the general idea of a hero's journey and it applies to everything from Star Wars to Pitch Perfect to any rom-com. It's like the same structure all the way through. And we don't learn about it a lot in marketing and advertising, but you do learn about it if you're taking film or if you're an author. Uh, so that's one of the key structures that I've seen. Actually, I wonder if I can share my screen here. I'm not sure if I can't, that's okay. Yeah, I don't see it there. Uh, yeah, so there's this, oh, there we go. Thanks, Mike. So we do have this hero's, we have this hero's journey and it's really common and you see it in places like superhero movies, but in advertising, we tend to put our brand as the hero and that's okay. You know, we, in normal times, which was three weeks ago, we would yeah. have- we would Way have, back then, yeah. Way back, you remember February? So February, yeah. simpler times. Uh, you have this idea that you're a soap company and the soap is the hero, it cleans up the mess. You have a car and it whips through the mountains. Uh, you have a bank and it provides these mortgages. You have all these things and we've always put our brand as the hero of our advertising and marketing. And that's fine because there is this connection that's created with that, uh, but that's what's changed. So we're in a new world right now and there's still going to be a hero in every story, but the hero is likely not going to be your company. Uh, what we're seeing now is this emergence of new heroes. Uh, one of those examples is definitely when we think about uh, the healthcare workers, right? So uh, that's the new hero. Parents are the new heroes. People that are are struggling in this new reality. And that's the most important lesson I'd like people to be able to take away is this idea that stories are still going to have a hero structure. It's just who is going to play that hero and what character is your brand going to play? So less so being the hero now moving over to the supporting role and supporting those heroes through your storytelling. So do you think, um, I think a lot of people wonder sort of about the the time that it would take to develop a story. Like normally brands and companies, you know, take six, seven months, but now we're sort of asked to respond almost immediately. Uh, what do you think about that timeline in terms of how quickly they should move? Yeah, so what we used to do was polish stuff, right? We would, everything was perfect. Everything felt like what it looked like on Instagram. One of the biggest changes I've seen in the last three weeks is the idea that nothing is perfect and that's okay. Like if I could have one of my kids run onto the screen right now and we've got 325 people on there and they'd be like, that's cool, that's fine. 
Yeah. So this idea I that, have a dog scratching at my door right now. So yeah. <laughs> so this is normal now. This is fine. This is fine that I'm sitting in my basement. Uh, I put a piece of art up just so that it would, and I just change it every day just because people are getting bored of seeing my same background. Oh yeah. So this idea of polished storytelling doesn't need to exist anymore. Everyone's okay with this idea that things are going to be a little bit rougher around the edges. And the idea is uh, thoughtfulness and speed. So you don't wait three months to support a medical worker if your company can do it. Uh, if you have a free version of your software, you give that away now, even if it's not perfect. And so uh, we're looking at this idea of good instead of perfect. And that applies to storytelling and marketing as well. How fast can you move? Uh, how thoughtful can you be with it? Yeah, and talking about bigger brands, like I saw last night, I saw my first Tim Hortons commercial about COVID-19 and the drive through worker was wearing gloves. Uh, and I just thought about how, how much longer um, that ad campaign would have taken three weeks ago. That would have planned, that would have been six months of meetings. But somehow they got a crew together, they got a staff, they got the messaging together really quickly. And obviously that's Tim Hortons, so they have a bit more money to play with. But smaller brands can get something together quickly too, you think? Yeah, because so, social media works that way. You can, you're doing this webinar right now. You put last week's webinar together in two days. You have hundreds of people on it. Uh, the technology exists to get things created quickly. I think where you're spending the most time now isn't on the idea of filming it and editing it and getting it live because there's so many ways to do that in an hour. It's this idea of is that content that you're putting out or that story, does it make sense for you to be a part of that conversation as a company right now? It's okay to not say anything right now. If you don't have yeah. a reason to be out there, just because you bought some ad space does not mean you have to you know, throw a a message in there. I think the thoughtfulness is more important now. And so you would say that also the the quality, the bar, I think society maybe we're lowering the bar a bit in terms of how good something has to look, how good it has to sound, all those types of things. Yeah, let's let's kind of separate the two ideas of concept and production. So production doesn't matter anymore. Low production value, that's fine. Uh, quality of what the content is about is more important now. There's a lot of sensitivities around certain things. Uh, I've seen a lot of mistakes happen where people that we're used to as marketers putting ourselves as the hero. And so sometimes we'll do that and it just doesn't come across. It comes across as self-serving. And there's a ton of brands that have made big mistakes in the last few weeks, spent a bunch of money getting stuff out there and then got this negative feedback, hurt their brand in doing it. And we're gonna, at the end of this webinar, sort of have a little lightning round showing some examples, but do you wanna tease one? Do you have one example right now of a brand that maybe um, should have taken a, a day or two to rethink their strategy? Yeah, and the challenge with this is, is that because we're all sitting at home, social media use is through the roof, uh, things are spreading really quickly. And I'm gonna use McDonald's as an example, first of all, because McDonald's is that big brand that you know, makes mistakes and does things great, but they're just at doing it at such a large scale. So you've probably seen this, but they did this, the arches, and they separated their arches around this idea of social distancing. This was done in Brazil. It wasn't like this was a global campaign that they thought through. It was just, you know, an agency in Brazil or McDonald's in Brazil separated the arches, took a picture of it, put it up on social, uh, and it blew up because people thought it was McDonald's trying to win an ad award or, you know, it didn't feel like it served any real purpose other than showing the McDonald's brand. Coca-Cola did a very similar thing in the middle of Times Square uh, around social distancing. They spaced out their letters. You can tell that these are things that are that sounded great two months ago and probably would win a can award if cans was even happening. Uh, yeah. they, just, they just look really insensitive or, or not thought through at this point. Yeah, no, it's 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 important to take a pause, and but it's also important to note, yeah, like you mentioned, Brazil, like it was a Brazil McDonald's campaign that started it, but then it becomes sort of a global when you're a global brand, that campaign then represent is represented around the world. Yeah, like the Calgary McDonald's dealers, they didn't franchise it, they had nothing to do with that, but it reflects these little things can reflect on a brand globally because uh, the speed of information and social sharing happens so quickly. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, Jerry. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to get you to sit tight. We'll bring you in back at the end of this. Uh, and then we'll share some examples of the good and the bad of storytelling that we've seen so far. Thanks, Mike. Excellent.
Thank you so much. Um, uh, up next is uh, my friend Kaylin Crump. Uh, Kaylin and I have worked together on many projects over the last couple of years. Uh, so I wanted to bring her in because she's uh, she is dealing with this in two different uh, manners. So she's the founder of Top Shelf, which is uh, a very successful PR agency out of Toronto, uh, but she's also a small business owner uh, of a company called Rebloom, and I'll get her to explain Rebloom a bit because it's it's a very touch it's a very touching company, but it, um, uh, ironically, it's a very touchy company. So it's it's at a time when you're trying to uh, you you sort of have to reinvent how your company works. Hi, Kaylin, how are you? Hi, guys. Hi, Mike. I'm good. How are Hi. you doing? Good, good. You're coming to us from Toronto, right? I am. Yeah, self isolating in Toronto. Excellent. Good job. Good job. Um, okay, so tell us a little. Tell everyone about. I will talk about Top Shelf in a second, but tell everyone about Raybloom because it's definitely one of those companies that's very impacted by all these sort of new rules that we're having to live by. Yes. So two weeks ago, what Rebloom was, was um, we're a flower recycling business. So we collect event flowers um, after conferences, weddings, sometimes even funerals. We repurpose them into smaller bedside table arrangements, and then we donate them to a charity, nonprofit, hospice, long-term care, hospital, you get what I'm going with here, um, facility, and then uh, they're enjoyed so that the flowers are enjoyed for days and not just hours. And then we go back a week later, we recollect them and we compost them. So we create compost. So it completes the life cycle of the flower. And then of course our business, um, because it's so touchy and it should be, and it should be enjoyed, um, completely had to gear shift around the 15th of March is when everything really changed for us. And um, I put out a post on Instagram and I told people that unfortunately we were stopping our collection to compost service and all workshops were halted. And that was just to protect not only our staff, but also the people that we're interacting with on a daily basis. Um, obviously at the time, not knowing like how big this was going to get, it just felt like a really smart and responsible thing to do. Um, and then, um, yeah. And then like two, three days later, we just started seeing all of the local flower growers that had all of these weddings and conferences and events that were canceled and they didn't know what to do with the surplus of flowers. Um, some of them were already paid for, some of them hadn't been, so they were definitely taking a cut. And so that's when we sort of rebooted Rebloom. And it was yeah. like, we can make a change here. We can do something to benefit the people who have been in isolation for several weeks now. And that's really been a number one driver for us is really recognizing even as we progress through the weeks that's going to happen um social isolation is going to be a really dramatic depressing thing not only for seniors but for us and our mental health as well and um so then i just it was monday and we decided wednesday that we were going to start picking up the flowers from the growers and it's one person that goes out in a truck um gloves on the whole nine yards we pick up the pails we don't accept anything with paper or cardboard um because we don't know what can be transferred on those materials and then we wipe down everything before it's even put into the truck we take the pails with us we drop them off at a senior's home or a long-term care facility and we wipe them down again because we don't know what's been in the truck before and we wipe them down again and we leave them outside. And then a caregiver or someone from like in-house staff comes out and collects them. So there's absolutely zero contact whatsoever. And then we get like, it's providing workshops and activities for seniors to, and long-term care places. Um, you know, it gives them something to do. It's just to break up the monotony of Groundhog Day, which is happening for a lot of people right now. Yeah, I think what was really interesting um, about your story with this with your small business rebloom was that you know there was a day or two where basically your business was wiped out, and then you you sat on it. You probably had a few cries, uh, which we all have. Uh, I don't know if you're a crier. I am. Uh, and then and then and then you 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you sort of rebooted it and you're like, okay, hey, I can't, you know, so you sort of let it wash over you and then you came back sort of reinventing what your company is going to do for the short term. Do you have advice for brands and businesses, the people who are listening about sort of how they might be able to rejig their company or how they should be thinking about it? Hmm. That's a really good question. I think for us, it was just natural because we saw the flood of, you know, Instagram posts that were coming out of like, everybody just felt like they were like barely surviving. And it was just so hard to, to just sit back and watch. Like when you saw over a thousand flowers just sitting there, you know, and having nowhere to go, but you knew how much joy that could bring someone like it was just super easy for us to make that decision. And it's free. We're not charging for it. We're not trying to capitalize on, you know, what's happening here. So for brands that are struggling, I mean, it's really it's got to be case by case, like you really have to look at what's happening in the economy, you know, people need food, people are going on EI right away. Some people have to defer their mortgage in order to try to afford food, even because they weren't saving up for a rainy day. You've got to take all of those things into consideration with brands. And so my biggest advice in this transfers into top shelf when, you know, clients of mine where we had press trips to New York, we had spring events, we had all sorts of stuff that we were doing. And it was about, okay, how, how do we reconfigure the budget? How do we take that money that we were going to spend and inject it back into the economy? And how do we support all of those things that are going on? And I know there's a strategy magazine article that just came out today and it was talking about only align your brand with things that make sense further on. I'm sorry, but no, if I'm working on a car brand and I see that my local grocer, not like a Loblaws, not that I have anything against Loblaws, but like a local grocer is suffering, I'm going to try to figure out how to, you know, rework the budget to help out that local brand and, and utilize my client's brand at the same time. Um, one of the things we did, and this might be helpful, is we charge, uh, we typically charge 15% of a service fee when we're paying for third party, which is very standard. And we've waived that across the board uh, for top shelf clients because we want them to know that we've got skin in the game, that we're just not suggesting things that like make sense, um, you know, in the time and moment, but that we're in it with them as well. And I think that that really resonates with them as well. when we're willing to give up money that we obviously need as a small business, but we're willing to give it up. So that's an interesting concept that you touched on there is, I mean, you normally as whatever kind of business you're in, you're always, it's almost like a game of chess. Every move is to sort of get you to the end, but maybe right now it's not necessarily about getting to the end. It's about what, what can your company contribute to the current situation? Yeah. I mean, Lord, I'd love to have a pandemic small business guide for dummies happening right now, but like we don't know what the end is, right? So it's really about what's right in front of us right now. Economy is failing, people are losing their jobs. We've never encountered this in our life. And I don't mean to be so doom and gloom, but it's about really when you start to give back, like the flowers that we give back for Rebloom, I mean, you just need to see the the shots that we get after from seniors um, and the smiles on their faces and that just warms your heart. Mind you, that doesn't pay the bills, it doesn't pay your hydro or your, you know, your cell phone plan, but for that moment you have just this brief break of insanity that's happening. Yeah. Okay, we have a question here for you, Kaylin. I'm just gonna read the whole thing out. Um, for an essential business that needs to create awareness that they're still open for business. What is the temperature gauge for still communicating that message? Uh, it's a it's a business that uh, supplies materials in the oil industry. The um, the industry is essential in heating our homes. Does it have a bad taste in the mouth? So you know, can can some businesses operate as usual? I think you have to operate from a position of compassion and empathy. Like, 
not that it's the same to the oil and gas industry because that's its own well bubble and category and industry but like for example i just got my you know bell cell phone bill and i'm like 90 dollars for internet right now like why can't you be like Verizon in the US and be helping me out a little bit here, like cutting back on things? So in that in, in that instance, I would say maybe there's a way for them to to cut back, um, you know, discount certain things. Maybe like we were saying earlier, you know, give them a month for free or you know something like that. But definitely, you need to stay relevant, but you have to. You have to come from a place of compassion and empathy right now. It's what Jared was saying earlier. It's not about your brand. It's about the action that you're doing that should be the hero. At least I hope that's what he said. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no it's, it's pretty close, yeah. Um, do, um, it, have you found uh, any inspiration? In, like, have you felt creatively drained in the last two weeks? Like, how have you um if brands are just you know because i'm saying the words brands but there's people who run those brands and we're all we're sitting at home and we're tired and we're reading the news and things like that like what what have you been doing to sort of creatively get people energized so two things one i have some non-corona days so i will go day on day off of news and media because i can pretty much get caught up because it's running nothing but 24 seven. And I find mm -hmm. that, that really stifles my creativity. When I do hangouts, like my FaceTime hangouts with my best friends, uh, we have a no Corona talk policy, unless it's like super detrimental, um, where they're like, you know, my friend has it or, you know, something like that. Um, and the best thing we can take advantage of right now is the quietness, the stillness, the, you know, just, um, just being able to like, you know, I'm lucky I have a balcony. I get to sit out on my, you know, on my balcony and open those doors and hear the birds sitting quietly, look around you, you know, sometimes an idea will spark just from me seeing, you know, someone in the park sitting on the bench. Um, and you just feel this emotion of like, I wonder what they're going through. And then I know the budgets that I'm dealing with, you know, on the top shelf side. And I'm like, how can I help the economy and also make my brand and my client look, not my brand, sorry, my client's brand look fantastic. Um, the other thing you mentioned this, where we're all sort of sitting around, you know, waiting, it's like, don't wait, like get involved. There are absolutely a lot of no contact volunteer things that you can do like fresh roots, right? Um, yep. Meals on wheels, a lot, of, a lot of companies are trying to find ways to, you know, alleviate that burden. And what we're doing on the, on the, um, on the rebuilding side with our employees is I want them to know that I'm in it with them. So I'll take less money, less salary, if that means that I get to top up the REI. So then they know that they're still going home making as much money as they always were making. And I think that that's really important because I want them to know it took me so long to find them in the first place. And I think that yeah. that gives them the, the, that comfort, that drive, that, that wantingness to you know, also help out our companies. No, I agree. Um, and can, uh, yesterday you and I were texting and there was a LinkedIn post that you shared with me that I really liked that I think is relevant to what we're talking about today. Do you remember what it was? No. <laughs> okay, no, sorry. It was the one of saying, basically, I think you said it was an old colleague of yours that, you know, oh, none of us have been. Yes. Um, I can't remember what he said, but it was something, but it totally resonated at the time. Um, but it was, but something... it was like, yeah, you're gonna have to look. It was something along the lines that we, oh, cut yourself some slack. We've never been through a pandemic before. Yeah, yeah, I think. True. Like, yeah, every, what, whatever, whatever it is you're doing today, you've, you've never done it during a global pandemic, cut yourself yeah. some slack. And it's that's so, such a good, yeah. I know, I thought that was, well, that's why I shared it, because I thought it was so great, but it is like, yeah. Everybody feels like they need to be, um, you know, like pushing out content, being relevant, talking about this. And it's like, 
you know, when I shared with you last week, getting that Taco Bell email and I'm like, I haven't been in a Taco Bell in 20 years. Like what? Yeah. And I don't care how you're dealing with Corona. How did you even get my email address? And why do you think that this <laughs> yeah. is relevant to me? But like, you don't, I, I got one. you don't need to tell me. You know? No, I got one yesterday from like the company that I buy domain names from. And they're like, we're here for you. And I'm like, I couldn't care less about you right now. <laughs> like, right. You're, you're, you're the main service. company. How is your life impacted? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, Kayla, great. Oh, one question. Someone did ask, um, uh, does Kayla have a contact email uh, sitting here in Cal? They're sitting in Calgary with a dozen plus phases. That might be good, be good, uh, put to good use. Sorry. Um, how can people work with Rebloom if they, you know, want to put their energy towards that right now? So we're all about no contact. So if they want, they can get in touch with us through the website, um, but they have to be able to be in a plastic bin or we'll bring our own um, and they leave them outside. They tell us what time they're out there or we text when we're outside, they bring them out, we stay in the truck, they bring them out, you know, like I said, no contact and we just wipe down everything and then we repurpose them. Yeah. Okay. And what's your, what's the website? Is it rebloomflowers.com? Uh, .ca. That's yeah, so close. All right. <laughs> okay, Kayla, we're going to bring you back in a few minutes to talk about the what the brands that have won and the big brands that maybe need to take a deep breath uh, okay. with storytelling. It's mm -hmm. going to be fun. Okay, thank you so much, Kayla. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kayla. That was fantastic. Um, up next is Farhan Mohammed. He is in Vancouver, and you've probably heard of, if, of his many uh, outlets, Daily Hive. They have outlets all over the country. Uh, he's the editor-in-chief and the founder, um, and he's been working with small businesses a lot uh, since this uh, broke out, um, uh, you know, since this really sort of took hold of our country two weeks ago. And so I wanted to bring him here to sort of talk about maybe some of the stories that he's seen and how he's been working with with everyone. Farhan, how are you? Oh, I am exhausted. How are you doing? Yeah. I know you very, I, I feel like I know you pretty well and I, yeah, like the, it's, this must be a lot for you. Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, when people ask me how I'm doing, I, in the past, I would always say that, you know, I'm, I'm okay, how are you type thing? And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm going to just say it. I'm exhausted. And, and I think that mm -hmm. there's this, um, there's this culture that we've created over the years and over, you know, generations and everything that we, we have to like put this face up. And I think what's really good with what's happening right now is just take that blinder off, take that mask off, tell people exactly how it is. I can see you, you're in your home. I, you can see me, I'm in my home. There's that vulnerability that's here between us. Let's break it down and let's start to change some of the things that's happening right now. Um, yeah, so, so you know, things are good. Things are very overwhelming. Um, I published something last week saying the, saying that same thing is, uh, in, everyone says it, we are in unprecedented times, uncharted territories. We have no idea what's gonna happen in the next 24 hours, in the next seven days, in the next two months. Like No one has any idea where we're going right now. And so it's a very overwhelming time to be in the news business. Uh, so you're in the news business. Tell people really quickly a bit about Daily Hive if they're not familiar. Yeah, so the company started in 2008 and uh, it started as a blog in Vancouver by two childhood friends uh, with the idea to just create something that was a little bit different from mainstream traditional media that was out there. Um, everything that we were, everything that we saw at the time was very much around um, stories that nobody, uh, nobody locally really cared so much about. And so we, we created this hyper local blog uh, that soon turned into a publication, and now it's turned into a national outlet with cities even outside Canada and the United States. Um, and so we talk about and write about everything that's happening in the cities that we're in uh, all across the country. So in Canada, we're in Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Toronto, Montreal. Um, and we're looking at all of, uh, you know, what's happening in those cities from business and sports to arts and culture, food and music and news and politics and like everything in between. Um, and at the same time, also bringing together people from around the country and sharing those stories and telling people that, you know, what's happening here in our neighborhood is something that's happening on the other side of the country in someone else's neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And these are things that are happening all over the place. So I wanted, I asked you to join us today because you're sort of, uh, I found Daily Hive to be one of the first companies that I saw that quickly responded last week. They didn't, <clears throat> there wasn't, clearly there wasn't weeks of meetings and things like that. It was, and you guys offered free advertising to small businesses. Yeah, it's, um, you, know, you know, this quickness and, and so far everyone's kind of saying that same thing. It's this quickness that, that exists that 
you just have to think on your feet and think on the fly. And that was something that, that we've always been true to since the beginning is all around community and giving back to the community and talking about the community and every single thing that we're doing is community. And so the way that we looked at it is that, you know, let's, let's kind of change up the way that we're doing it. Right now, we are creating so much content on our website. Every single day across all of our cities, we're creating something like 100 stories, if not more. Um, and we're talking about business. But how can we help even more than that? How can we take it one step further? And so we thought, well, you know, people aren't buying right now. Ad campaigns have stopped. Uh, ad dollars have dropped. And so, well, let's start giving back to the community a little bit. We have the inventory. We have the space for it. So why not change things up a little bit? So we put something out and we said, uh, if you're a small uh, a small business in one of the cities that we operated in, um, drop us a line and uh, and we can help you out. You can tell the community if you're open. You can tell them. Uh, you can just share a good message. You can just you know inspire some some hope and uh, and so so far the results have been through the roof. Um, I can't uh, to be honest. I cannot remember what day we launched that on. It might have been two days ago. It might have been seven days ago. We don't even know what day it is today, so it doesn't matter. I, I was going to say, I was going to say Happy Friday, but it's not Friday. So uh, we've, had hun- not. We've, we've had hundreds and hundreds of people who um, who have said who have reached out to us. But it was one of those that we said, you know, we have the space, we have the inventory. Let's let's do something with it. And at the same time, you see businesses across the country who are doing the same thing. Restaurants with tons and tons of food who are giving it uh, giving it to food banks and giving it out. So it's it's good it's it's something you're starting to see a lot more of around the around the country and around the world um daily hive i read it quite a bit and it's hard not to it shows up in your facebook feed every 10 minutes someone's sharing you guys create very shareable content that's i think something you excel at um so you're used to telling stories and you're used to sort of making a story shareable so maybe something you know making it the headline or things you know make it something that's People just want to click share. Um, what's your advice for people looking at changing their stories? So what what they wanted to sell two weeks ago is not necessarily what they can talk about this week. What what would you advice would you give to them? Um, you know, Jared said. Actually, everyone so far has said it. Uh, it's you know, one thing is it, it's okay not to say anything right now. One of the worst things, and you said this, uh, Mike, as well, is you're getting bombarded with so many messages from people. Uh, a note from our CEO, a note from the organization, a note. I'm like, enough already. I don't, I don't need another one. You know, you look at that to say, well, as a business, you have to do that. You have to tell your customers and, and consumers what's happening. But at the same time, everyone knows it. At a, at a certain point, all events started getting canceled, and we knew that was happening. And so. It's it's how to do it in the, in that right way and think about things. You know, you you have to put compassion over everything. You have to be human. If if you as a business don't have to do something right now, don't do it. Don't force it. And so start to think about things from a human aspect. You know, share stories that um, that are happening in uh, that your employees are are doing. Uh, talk about what's happening at home. Talk about the culture. Talk about what's happening in their minds. Um, connect with people one on one. Host these things like. This, this you, I think you put together in the past week. Uh, it, it, this isn't difficult stuff. And so the more you overcomplicate something, the more complex it's going to be. Um, the messaging is getting convoluted. It's going to get all messed up. And so take things a little bit, um, take a step back and look at things from that human aspect and say, do people actually care about this right now? Is it actually affecting them in a life, life or death basis? Uh, you know, whether it's Taco Bell or whoever, like, if that doesn't affect me right now in the moment, I don't care about it. And when you're sitting on on my side and you've got hundreds of females that are coming every day pitching you stories, like 99% of them you're just glancing over because it doesn't matter right now. I get it as a business, it matters, but for general public, it's not. And so think of it from that approach. I always say that, you know, try to humanize your business and humanize what you're doing. But especially right now, try to humanize everything that's happening. That if if anything, we need that most. Yeah, and we'll talk about some examples here in a little bit. I'm going to read you a question here we got. Um, I was scheduled to launch three companies in March. For two of the projects, I was able to restructure, allowing us to accommodate social distancing enough to perhaps soft launch. I'm concerned about appearing insensitive launching a company during the pandemic. Is it best to launch or embrace the new world with a modified message? Ooh. Uh, and knowing I mean, there's no right answer, just yeah. your opinion, I guess. No, 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 there isn't. Um, and I feel for that. We've had some products and projects that we've had that 
you know, we're having that same discussion. Should we launch this right now? Probably doesn't make sense, but you know, we're almost there. It's almost ready. Should we do it anyways? Um, my my opinion is modify it. Right now, the best thing uh, that that we see in times of crisis is people coming together, people being creative, and starting to redefine things a little bit. Like the best thing to me right now is that you're seeing people get a little bit vulnerable. They're getting into their homes, um, like I was saying, and things are changing. And my hope for the future is that we start to break these barriers down, that you realize you don't have to get together physically. You don't have to get together and, and be there with one another, that you could just do this over video. There's so many meetings that happen that, you know, this is showing that this is possible. And so take that into your business and, and definitely change it up a little bit and say, okay, you're going to launch something. Well, maybe you need to change 5, 10, 15% of what it is that you're doing because we are going to get out of this. It's, it's only a matter of time. And when that happens, are you ready for that? And you change now so that, you know, you can get through the next however many weeks and months this is going to be. And then when it's, when it's done and we're ready to go back to whatever normal life is, uh, you're ready for that. Well, and I think too, I think, I mean, again, just my opinion, but the next two weeks are sort of the hunker down weeks. And so that's when re people really will be uh, sort of looking for, I mean, we'll have poured through all of Netflix. Uh, and, you know, like there's only so much streaming you can do. And so um, and I'm going to email people about it later, but like, I guess I'll like sort of announce it, but we're sort of launching an online conference tomorrow that we'll announce uh, called Social Homes. We have Social West, Social East social central we're going to do social at home uh and that you know that literally is an idea we came up with two days ago and we have a brand we have everything ready to go because it's just a matter of our whole our whole model was put on hold everything was moved to the fall but that doesn't mean i'm just going to sit and wait for something else to happen i have i have to do it myself so that's a little spoiler for people listening right now there's social at homes coming <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's something like, you know, I, I have a friend, he, he's DJing, uh, or he is a DJ, and he's someone that he makes money to go to an event and DJ an event. And he said, what do I do? And so we, we were doing some brainstorming. I said, why don't you just go on your balcony and play some music and have a, have a time? And he did that yesterday. And I said, this is great. Why don't you do this over Zoom and send the link out to everyone and just get this going? You know, it's, it's starting to just, it's thinking things a little bit differently and being creative. We have all this time in the world to sit and do nothing, which is the best time. Uh, you can literally just sit and look out your window. That's the best time to be creative and just think about what is there that you've always wanted to do? How do you do things a little bit differently? Um, and then start acting on it. Yeah, and Farhan, um, just a question. Do you you mentioned um, we've talked about the free advertising on Daily Hive? Are you full for capacity? Do you still have inventory of people of businesses are interested? To my knowledge, I know that it was. Um, I, I think we hit capacity, uh, but that said, um, you know, I don't know how long this is going to go for. So just keep flooding us, uh, keep sending. I think it's COVID help at dailyhive.com. Um, okay. Yeah. If, if we if we can do it, we will definitely help out as much as we can until this is all over and then beyond that. Yeah. And you know, we're talking about giving each other time. I don't know how many times you and I have tried to sit down and have coffee together, and it never happens. And then this happens, and we find time. So it's great. That's the good thing about this. I don't know if people realize it's literally everyone's available. Like I've never. One of the reasons things can move so quickly is because I'm like, hey, I need your logo or I need this. It like comes to you instantly because we're all just sitting here waiting. So it's, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Oh, 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 you need something? Oh, you want to talk tomorrow? You want to talk in an hour? Because I have nothing happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so, it's so easy to plan things. All right, Farhan, thank you so much. Okay, we're going to bring everyone on now, um, all of our panelists. And we're going to do a little, um, a little uh, uh, game here. So we have some, uh, maybe we'll talk with some brand stories really, really quickly, maybe um, a good and bad. Hi, everyone. Uh, and uh, we'll, um, and then there's lots of questions. And so maybe we'll just try to get through some of them really quickly. Um, all right. So we have Farhan and Jared and Kaylin. Everyone's there. I'm going to take a screenshot. Yay. All right, there we go. Everyone look. There we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, so, um, J uh, Jared, you mentioned uh, Victoria Brewery. They're making hand sanitizer. Oh, your microphone, Jared, sorry, and Farhan, too. Oh, That's I mean, I'm paying attention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just faking that. I was just mouthing it out and seeing if she's asking. There you go. Uh, 
Yeah, I think there's this interesting thing happening where companies are looking at the resources that they have access to. Daily Hive has access to ad inventory. Kalen has all these flowers. And you're seeing breweries, Victoria Brewery is the one that, that I noticed, but they're, they realize that they make alcohol and alcohol can be used in hand sanitizer. And you know what? Hospitals are super short on sanitizer right now and so are stores. And so they just changed it. They, it's interesting. You listen to these articles or talking to these brewers and they're like, yeah, we just needed to change the formula a bit and we can make huge amounts of this in a really short period of time. I think that's an exceptional way of just thinking about what the resource is that you already have access to and how it can help these other heroes that are existing in the world right now. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Lauren, do you have any good? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Kayla. Sorry, I was just going to say, like, look at what Dyson just came out with this morning. Like, Dyson, Ford, GM. I mean, Ford and GM announced it last week, but Dyson is now doing the individual ventilators and isolation pod module things. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah same no. thing with Labatt offering, uh, you know, they changed up their breweries around and they did, they made like 50,000 or are making 50,000 bottles of hand sanitizer. It's, if your business can do it, then, then change it up and do it. And Kaylin, you have in your notes Tiki's. Tell me about Tiki's. Well, I wasn't going to mention the name. Oh, oh, shoot. You're right. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I just found it really funny that I got an email from them saying, um, hey, we know you're sitting around, you know, you don't have a lot to think about right now, but when you're planning your next beach vacation, why don't we give you 20% off, you know, your, your sandals? And you're like, really, really? Another one though, another one was Spotify. I mentioned this to you guys earlier where you know how based on your listening habits it will serve up you know some sort of playlist and it was like for your morning commute and like what <laughs> yeah Hilton, are you serious and i said like the title should be like calm the heck down right now like <laughs> Dial, dial it down would be a better one, actually. Dial it down. Do you know what would be good for that? If they had done your commute, but it was like 30 second songs, um, <laughs> like that would have been really clever. Like, like you going from your living room to the kitchen or something? Yeah, like songs to listen to while pacing your house, kind of. <laughs> Absolutely. You guys, I think bad examples, and not to poop on groups too much, but like a, a, those sort of make sure that people know to not go that far. Are there any other bad examples that have rubbed you guys the wrong way at all, Farhan? Yeah, I've got one. I'm not going to name them, but um, uh, a newspaper uh, right now, media is going. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to. You have to. Yeah, share. No, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm not going to name one name this one because they're they're in the industry but and you know I don't like calling out other media for stuff um but right now there's there's some mass layoffs that are happening across the country hopefully there's going to be some sort of relief that comes from the government uh for some of them but there was a there's a newspaper local one they just laid off uh, some people um they they did it over email they locked the staff out of their email account like it's just it, everything just goes back to be human uh, the craziest thing is you're watching this play out over Twitter and uh, you're watching this exchange from this now laid off employee and the manager. And it's just a big, what the hell is happening right now? Just be human, be smarter, think about things through, think about the worst case scenario that's going to happen and then act on that. Yeah. It's stopping up on compassion. What it is like, yeah. who would ever want to get laid off that way, especially during this time? That's bananas. Um, and Jared, uh, Jared, do you have any other bad example that sort of rubbed you the wrong way? Well, I don't, you know, there's there's almost an unlimited number of bad examples because you have teams that are used to marketing in a certain way and everything changed in three weeks. So one thing from like a tech perspective, we're a tech company, and I, I know that some of this isn't malicious behavior. So that Spotify playlist was likely set up a month ago. That email mm -hmm. from a sandal company is part of a drip campaign in their marketing automation. Uh, one well, one last thing. Either because they called out. They said, well, we know true. at the time that you're sitting that's, at home. That's true. So, they changed the beginning of the email. But there is yeah. a lot of, like one lesson for everyone is that your story might be the same. It just needs to be told differently. So one thing is just look at every single piece of messaging that you have out there and see if it makes sense anymore. Um, mm -hmm. 
I actually, I'm, I'm looking a lot more at the positive examples now to see what it is that we can learn to do rather than not do. Um, and there's this interesting idea that either you have resources, but we're not a brewery. None of us here are a brewery. I can't produce sanitizer at an insane scale. Uh, so the other thing is like, look at your heroes being maybe your customers. Uh, I think there's a great example that TELUS has just a counterpoint, Kaylin, on yours with Bell. Like I'm a TELUS customer and telcos are easy to hate, right? Like most people hate your telco, you hate your bank. They're easy to, to cut down on. Um, we went way over our internet limit. Like our billing is in three weeks and we're at 120% of our internet limit already. Wow. So I got an email from TELUS yesterday and it said, you've exceeded your limit. Don't worry about it. It's on oh, us. That's right? amazing. And then my credit card, uh, the expiry date was February. And so the March payment got delayed and they came back and they said, if you can't, like I paid my bill now, just to make sure I paid my bill, but it said, if you can't pay with your bill right now, no worries, let us know when you can pay. Uh, they didn't do a marketing campaign. They just changed the emails that they were already sending to me to adapt to the situation. I thought that was super impressive. And it's it's not yeah. even a big story. It's just an email that came out to their customers. It's nice when it's um, something that they're not even asked for. Yeah. Know that yeah that will create brand loyalty and retention right so yeah the brand we don't have to they don't have to do this i'm willing to pay for my overages but they've just come out ahead of this and said we know this is affecting you and the long-term credibility that they're building with me and my family is insane right yeah. now absolutely so we have a lot of questions and we're running short on time so maybe i'll just ask them and maybe just sort of quick answers kind of thing if that's cool with you guys um uh, so I understand that a lot of businesses are worried about making money during crisis, but for nonprofits, how do we continue fundraising with our story in social media? Anyone? I mean, uh, a tricky one. I'll, I'll take it quickly. Um, okay. There are a lot of people that still have money. And so don't forget that. Yeah, no, it's uh, there's lots of people who are, you know, making full time salaries, still just doing it from home kind of thing. So zeroing in on your message a bit and maybe working with your previous donors, I would suggest. Yeah, cast, they cast them in a little bit smaller. Did they mention mm -hmm. what um, nonprofit sector they're in? No. Um, okay, yeah, so I mean, feel, people can still ask, right? Like there's nothing wrong with asking. My advice for lots of nonprofits all the time is ask for help. There's always people who want to help. And at a time like this, and it sort of reminds me a bit of the, I, I'm in Calgary and during the Calgary flood, there was too much help. They were turning away volunteers. Um, and so if you ask for help, people will help you. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Lots of people are right now, but if you need help, you need help. You can't change that current situation, whether it's financial or it's a body or whatever. Um, so we are a new business organization that has yet to define the brand, but we are focused on being a resource in the time of crisis. How do we build an audience in these challenging times? You can take a oh. look. Go ahead, Kaylin. Oh, I was just gonna say, I would pause. It de again, it depends on what is what is the brand, what's the industry, what are they doing? Like right now, we don't even know what tomorrow is going to look like. So my advice is if you can, just just take a hot minute. And by a minute, I mean like a week. Like just, oh, yeah. like, yeah. Jared, what do you think? Yeah, I'd counter that just that uh, if you have a really clear idea of what your company is, so in Telus's example, on their website, it says, it doesn't say they're great at like internet reach and stuff like that. It says customer service. That's their number one thing. Look back at what the mission of your company is and then apply that mission. So Caitlin, like Rebloom's idea is like bringing joy to people through flowers. Like that doesn't have to change. You can still build an audience. How you approach that is differently. Uh, Daily Hive is, you know, building a brand new audience of businesses by helping them. I don't think there's anything wrong with connecting with people, uh, engaging with them, building a list if that's what it is. It's just that messaging that should change. But if you bring it back to what your core value is as a company and just act a little bit differently around that same core mission, I think it's pretty, it can be pretty clear. It comes clear really quickly. Yeah, and don't expect- uh, This is a good, sorry. 
I was just saying, but don't expect to make money. Like if you're launching a business and you're trying to service, like Rebloom's not making any money right now, right? So, so, so that sort of leads into our question, right? Uh, another one here. So I'm a yoga instructor and, uh, and in this crisis, many studios and teachers are offering free classes online. Um, it's not sustainable. How does a company smoothly switch to pay classes? And you're seeing that a lot. Like, so that's that free conversation, right? So we want to offer free services. But at the end of the day, is this an opportunity for companies to convert new fans to customers? I don't think is, oh yeah, go ahead, Kayla. Start. I want to ask all of you, I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to be moderating this, but I just like, I don't know. Yeah, go ahead, Kayla. Um, I think for the yoga instructor would depend if they work with any studios. I know a lot of yoga instructors I know, they work with several different studios and they still, even though they're offering their classes online and that yoga instructor goes into the studio, no contact whatsoever, and they record it and, you know, it's not quality you know production but they still get paid for the class another thing that i saw that i thought was really great was one of the yoga studios said if you can afford to keep your membership going even though we're not honoring the classes we would still love to pay our instructors um and i thought that was a really nice and interesting approach and just putting all your cards on the table, Farhan, have you run into, you're working with a lot of small businesses all the time, especially now, or have you, have you seen that navigation of free to pay? Yeah, you've seen so many right now. It's, it's just changing up your funnel. Instead of going after people and saying, okay, we want you to pay, it's, we want you to just come in, come in and enjoy it. And then at some point down the road, you're going to funnel that down and maybe it's 1% or 2% or maybe it's even less than that. Um, or it's more than that, but if you're starting wide and you're opening up that net and you're offering offering something that's you know different to what everyone else has, um, eventually it'll it'll convert for you. I have a, a cool example. My wife goes to Spin, and the Spin studio is shut down right now, but they leased out the bikes. So we have one of their bikes. They cleaned it up. They dropped it off. We're paying 300 bucks for the bike. It's an amazing bike. It's like a Peloton style bike. And we're paying for it for the next month, and they're still doing some online classes. I thought I thought that was genius and smart, and we're supporting that that studio and everything. I totally agree. I think it's so so smart. I saw that. I saw that. I like. I saw that one on the news. So I mean, and that's that other piece of this, right? So you're creating customer value, but you're also maybe generating a news story, which pays off in dividends later. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, uh, one second here. Um, so there's companies who are uh, still operating. So a co-working space here. Uh, we're just ramping up everything on social media with events, like we were going to do events. How do I tell a story that we're still here for our potential customers um, digitally and make it make their brand more appealing during times like this? Do stuff like this. Figure out what you're what what they want and just offer it in a different way. Mm -hmm. We were all saying before we started this webinar that this this crisis is a time for co-working type spaces to shine uh, in the next coming weeks and months as the work how the work day changes and how people want to work and things like that. Yeah, I think I mean I think Fast Company just came out with an article about it talking about this is the opportunity for employees to show their company that they can work from home, they can work remotely. I mean, I feel so bad for all of the agencies and people who have leases and buildings that are used to housing, you know, five to 500 employees and they have no one in there and it's just an empty workspace now and they still have to pay their lease or their, uh, excuse me, rent on the building. But I really do think that this is a time to shine for like WeWork type spaces. Um, not right now. I'm not promoting, just to be clear, I'm not promoting like y'all need to go into a WeWork or something and like hang out together. Yeah. Just saying in time, I think we're proving, employees can prove that I can be as productive, if not more, being at home. Or sorry, in a space like that. So let's wrap up because we're already over time and I appreciate everyone for sticking around. But let's talk about the future. Let's talk about, say, three, four weeks from now, um, we can start opening our doors a bit. We can start, we can maybe acknowledge someone on the sidewalk. What 
what could brands be doing or nonprofits or anyone? What what should they be thinking about in a few weeks about getting people back? So, for example, I work in the event industry. I have events. One of my fears is that people will be a bit nervous about coming into an event. Or if you are in or a busy restaurant, you're used to going to that busy restaurant because it's packed and I like cocktails. But now we've sort of been trained to not do that or a travel destination, airlines. What, what advice would you give to them? Well, one thing, if anyone's ever done a cleanse before, uh, you come <laughs> off that cleanse and sometimes you just eat a hot, like a hamburger and a hot dog right after that, right? I think we're in less than two weeks into this. I am missing human connection that I'm not related to, uh, that doesn't live inside my house. I am missing being in a crowd. I'm watching TV and I see a crowd gathering and it's like, I'm like, what? I'm like, oh my God, how are they doing that? I know it's a TV show, but how? I think we will have a, a gap that we're missing a month from now, two months from now, three months from now. We like being entertained. We like being informed. We like being educated. There's companies that are going to be able to fill that void for us and they're going to be able to do it maybe in slightly different ways, but we're going to want it. I'm going to want to go to an event as soon as it's safe and healthy for me to go to an event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's like it's it's that slow ramp up. It's not something where you can just turn the tap on and say we're going from zero to 100. It has to be slow. Um, also, ask your ask your uh, customers, ask them what they what they think, ask them what they want, hold them, talk to them. The best thing right now is to continue that conversation with them and constantly check in and see how they're doing. But it's get, getting to that point that when it is safe, um, it's got to be like zero to 10, zero to 20, zero to 30. Uh, don't be Tesla and go zero to 100 in like three seconds. <laughs> I like it. And Kayla, do you want to wrap up? Do you have any advice? Um, I really hope we're coming out of this in a couple of weeks. And this is a challenge that we're facing in terms of how to, to scale back up. But I think we just, um, you know, we're in it for the long haul now. And it's how we survive getting through that and making sure that small businesses are surviving and we're doing our part for that. Um, and like my fellow panelists have said, I think when the tap does turn on, you drink slowly, not from a fire hose. All right, that's great advice. That's so good. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to everyone that watched this uh, webinar. We hope you found it useful. And thank you so much, everyone. Keep staying safe. Scrub those hands. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Oh, and thank you so much to Skeeter Media for sponsoring this. Uh, we really couldn't have done it without them, so really appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.